we'd like to say good morning to the class. We have another, another fine lesson. Amen. It's lesson four, date September the 25th, 2022. Unit one, God calls Abraham's family. The subject is dynamics of family leadership. Printed passage, Genesis 35, 22b through 26, 38 chapter, 24 through the 26th verse, 49th chapter, 10 through the 12th verse. Let us pray. Father, here we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for another Sunday school lesson. We ask you, Lord, that we be able to apply these things to our lives and our learning and understanding of your will and your way, Lord. We ask you to continue blessed and strengthen all those that are going forth, that they may be strong and remain until you return. In Jesus' name I pray. I'd like to say give an honor to God, to our pastor, amen, and his wife, and deacons and trustees, and our superintendent, Brother Nehemiah, and Sister Brenda, amen, that uh, they continue to bless each and every one. Dynamics of Family Leadership. Amen. And this is uh, interesting, amen, to see this story, amen, about a family. And it seems like, it seems like this would have been the best family, amen. Everybody would have been doing everything right. There, was, there would be no dysfunction in it. Uh, everyone will follow the, follow the ways of the Lord and keep God's commandments. But we find that this was not so. Amen. This was a what you call a dysfunctional family. Amen. So we might look at these this family and, and in the first uh, verses of our lesson, it names off all the all the children and the the mothers of the children that were born to Jacob. Amen. And you would think that they would have it all together, but they didn't. Amen. And you see, uh, and we look at it as, oh, man, these people were terrible. And they did so many terrible things. And I would like for you to just take a look at our family, my family, all of our families. And if we look at our, all of our families, we're all have a dysfunctional we all been dysfunctional amen uh we got dysfunctional members in our families amen and how do we know that all you have to do is go to a family reunion or maybe be just be around your family even your immediate family it might be your brothers sisters or even your parents might be dysfunctional amen and we find dysfunction all over it and especially when we don't uh, do the will of God, amen, all of the family might not follow Christ, amen. At one time, we were uh, out of the way. We weren't doing the will of God. We were dysfunctional, amen. So if you look at the family, look at the whole family, and I got uh, uh, seven brothers, amen, and you think about seven brothers, say, were we uh, functional or dysfunctional? There was a time in our lives we was dysfunctional. Amen. So uh, we should be able to understand what went on here. And this is, you you would think Jesus would have came through one of the best family in all the way through, through life. It would have been like uh, nothing. Uh, everybody that he, he came through all those generations would have been perfect. But it wasn't like that. Amen. He came through. Uh, you got to think about Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. You had uh, David uh, had a man killed. Moses killed a man. All these people that we look over the generations uh, uh, before Jesus came. Amen. They was dysfunctional. They had something going on. Amen. But the Lord, he let us know. And He don't, the Lord uh, did not hide these things from us. Amen. He let us see what it is really like to be in a family because he knew that we also would be will come from what? Dysfunctional families. And that was something that Philip uh 
when he uh, told uh, Nathaniel about uh, that, that they had found the master, they had found Jesus, amen. And and he said, and, and he said, uh, uh, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Amen. And he was looking at the dysfunction of Nazareth, amen, and all the things that was, you know, that what, what what Nazareth was like, amen. He applied that to Jesus, amen. And a lot of times, even in our family, we can have a dysfunctional family, and we first thing that people would do, they would look at you as if you know you might be doing everything right, but then they look at your family and say, "Man, they, are they like their family members, the the ones that do wicked things and corrupt things?" Amen. But we know, we know, we're of a different family now. We're of the family of God. We're the children of God. So that's why Jesus came. Jesus came so we'll have a family that's not dysfunctional. Amen. In heaven will we'll dwell everything that is righteous. Amen. Everything righteous will be there. So there, there will be no more dysfunction. Amen. Now, we're going to go... Uh, in the early part of our, our uh, the chapter, and we're going to start there to give us a kind of an understanding of verse um, verse uh, 24 through 26 and why it came to pass. And we know that Jesus, Jesus came through the tribe of Judah. Amen. We'll see that the lesson uh, is dealing with Judah and some of the actions that he did. And this, this is what brought forth what these uh, 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 these verses from 22 through 26, this is the reason they happened. And that's, let me read a little bit of that. Amen. Um, uh, uh, let's start at the sixth verse of the 38th chapter. And this was that, it was telling about the, uh, the sons that was born to, born to Judah. Amen. And you would think Judah would have had, oh, just a perfect family. His kids would have been, oh, man, just, just perfect. But we have to understand, we, in, we inherit our parents' fat flesh. Amen. Amen. And those same desires that was in our parents can be in us. Amen. Amen. We inherit the same, we inherit their flesh. Amen. Part, part us. Part mama and part daddy. Amen. So, amen. Now let's look at this. The sixth verse says, And Judah took a wife for his for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And that and we see that she's gonna play a role in, in our lesson. Amen. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was what? Wicked. You hear that? Wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him, killed him. Took him out. Amen. Because he was wicked. Amen. And you would think, say, Lord, well, this is Judah's son. You know, you know, we he's gonna be uh just great. You know, he's we, he's not gonna have any problem out with his kids, but he did. Amen. And Judah said unto Odin, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seeds to thy brother. Amen. And let's go quickly. Before we move from that verse, let's go quickly, and we go to the um, uh, the twentieth chapter of Luke, and when Jesus was confronted with that very question about uh, seven brothers uh, taking one one to wife, and they had told him to Jesus, but they was trying to tempt Jesus at that that time. Amen. Um, uh, and let's start the 20th 20, the chapter and the uh, 27 verse 8. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which denied that there is any resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take, take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Amen. So they went on to say seven, but the seven, all you know, one brother married, then it, then it, then that brother died, then it, it 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 was it was about seven of them in all. So, uh, 
uh, but they was asking toward the resurrection. But we see that Jesus was faced with that question of, you know, who, whose wife is that going to be? But we find out in lesson that uh, uh, um, uh, Judah was just fulfilling. He was trying to fulfill what the what the word of the Lord said. Uh, that the brother, the next oldest brother, had to take uh, 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 the brother that died, wife, and raise up seed for uh, to their brother to honor their brother. Amen. So the eighth verse says, I mean ninth verse says, and Odin knew that the seed should not be his. You hear that? And it came to pass when she, when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground. So he practiced uh, um, uh, contraceptive. He, he did natural contraceptive. I put it like that. He tried natural contra contraceptive to keep from uh, having a child uh, uh, unto his brother. Least that he should give seed to his brother. So he did that. He he did it on his own. So you find look at look at the children. Look at how the children were even even uh, uh, deceitful. Amen. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore he slew him also. Now that's two of his sons gone. Amen. Because they disobeyed. And did evil in the sight of God. Amen. And did not follow what the Lord had asked them, uh, 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 had commanded for them to do. Amen. Uh, then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law. Now this here is where, where, where we find our lesson. This is where it come in. Amen. This is where, it's, where it all started. Amen. He, it, now listen what he said to Tamar. Then Judas to said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house till Sheila, my son, be grown. That was the youngest son. So he wasn't old enough to have a wife at that time. So he was going to give Sheila to the next son. Amen? But he was just too young. So for Sheila, my son, be grown. For he said, least preadventure he die also as his brethren did and Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house so he lived she lived with him amen waiting hoping that she will have children one day which will continue uh able able her lineage uh to keep going or her husband lineage to keep going amen and in in a process of time the daughter of Shua uh uh, Judah's wife died. That that was his wife that he had these sons by. Amen. He uh she died. Amen. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his uh sheep herders, sheep shearer to Timnah. Uh he and his friend Hira uh, the Adamite. That was that was that was uh, uh his wife's uh father. Amen. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnah to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garment off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way in Timnah. For she saw that Sheila was grown and she, she, and she was not given unto him to wife. And you notice that they were all just making decisions on their own without consulting God. It just left God out of the picture. They just made decisions. Amen. And, and when we make decisions not including God, amen, we make very uh, uh, bad errors in our life. Amen. So she decided she was going to do it herself. And you saw that Sarah and Abraham, they tried to do it on their own. So, um, so, amen, let's go back to, amen. Uh, when Judas saw her, he thought her to be a what? A harlot. And she knew what to put on. She knew what to dress up. She knew what type of attire to put on to attract him. Amen? Because his wife had just died. So, amen, I don't know if he was lonely or what, but he went in unto her. Amen? He, uh, 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 
got sexually involved with her. Amen. So, amen. So, he turned in, by the way, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew that, he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. Now, you think about that. He, by, by not doing what God said, by fornicating, he went in, uh, 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 in unto his daughter-in-law. He he was sexually involved with his daughter-in-law, not knowing that was his daughter-in-law. And that's what a lot of things, amen, we do. We don't know what, a lot of times when we do immoral things, we don't know what the consequence is. We're like a, a ox going to the slaughter. It's like we're blind. We put blinders on and we're not looking at the situation. We just do it, amen? But we find there is consequence in our actions, amen? There are consequences in our action. Amen. And he said, I will sin. He said, and she said, What would thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Amen. So if you want to lay with me, you're going to have to pay me. It, that's what she was saying. But she was doing it so she knew that she was going to get pregnant by him. Amen. And a lot of times we know in the world today, women will. Amen. They might, you know, a lot of times they're not interested. Oh, they know they're going to get pregnant. Amen. But yet they do it anyway. Amen. How many children have been born just because of just lust? Amen. They're not, it's not because you're married. It's not because you, you, you love that person. It's just lust. Amen. And a child is conceived through lust. And how many men have children? That is conceived through our lust. Amen. Just through the lust. Amen. By not restraining ourselves. Being able to control our vessels as the Lord tells us to. And then when we don't do that, there are consequences in not doing that. Amen. You can get a, get a, 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 get a woman pregnant. You don't even care about her. You're not even, you're not even interested in that person. The only thing you're thinking about is the act. Is satisfying the lust of our flesh. Amen? So men have to really uh, have Christ in our lives. We must, and women have to have Christ in our lives to be able to resist the wiles of the devil because the devil is going to present it to us. And what she did, she presented herself to him and she, she just, amen, just to fulfill her own need. Amen? As if if you would call it that, that she wanted children. Amen? So, a lot of times, even today, people, uh, a lot of women just want children. And they're, they're, they, won't even, they don't even want a husband. Amen? All they want to do is have a children and have a family. Amen? And we find that you're going, you'll have problems. You'll run into problems. That's why a lot of things is going on today with our children. They don't have direction because they don't have both parents there. Amen? Now, uh, that's not popular to say, amen, but you, it, it, it takes two. We need two parents to raise a kid, amen. I know there are some women that do it on their own, and which is good, but it's better to have two parents there. So the man, will know, if you got sons that know what it's like to have a daddy and have authority, you, they need to know uh, an authority figure because when some police come to them and 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 and, 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 and uh, say something to them, they won't react in a in a such a a, a, a dominant manner. You know, it, you know, not not hearing that authority figure over them. Amen. So, in same way with the daughters, the daughters need to know what it's like to have a a a, a person in their life that take care of them. Amen. Having a male figure that takes care of that mama and takes care of the family. So they can see that. Amen. That's, most of them don't see it. Amen. So they get choose guys that don't do anything. They don't, they don't do much. Amen. So let me get back to the lesson. Amen. Uh, so, so uh, let's go. Uh, it say, and he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock and... She said, Without give me a pledge till thou send send it. So 
He was supposed to send her uh, a, a, a goat. Amen. That was the payment. Amen. And uh, and then he then she said using wisdom, and that lets you know men. A lot of men just don't think. Amen. They just don't think. Amen. And she was thinking, but he wasn't. Amen. She, this is what she said. Without giving me a pledge till I sent, and what she was doing was getting getting evidence that the letter knows she knew when she when she her stomach started showing that they were gonna they were gonna they were gonna she was gonna be stoned for being for playing the harlot. Amen. As we see in our lesson. Amen. Amen. He gave her and came in unto her and she. Amen. And he said, "What pledge shall I give thee?" And she said. Thy signet, thy bracelet, and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. She knew it. She knew it. She knew what she was doing. Amen. He was like an ox going to the slaughter. Amen. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil, laid by her veil from her. And, and put on the garments of her widowhood. So she went right back and dis went back to her regular, <laughs> amen, the way she dressed being a widow at that time, amen. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of the friend of the Adamite to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not, <laughs> amen. Then he asked the men of, the, of that place, saying, where is the harlot? That was openly by the wayside. And they said, there was no harlot in this place. Amen. He, a lot of trickery. In the family, oh my goodness, it was just tricking everybody, tricking somebody. Amen. And he returned to Judah and, and said, I cannot find her. Find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, let her take uh, let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Now he's worried about being ashamed. It was shame what he did. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. Amen. He's worried about the pledge that he made to to a, to uh what he thought was a prostitute. Amen. That he thought was a prostitute. Now that's the way we do. We we try to pay our way out of things. We try to instead of repent, we try to pay our way out. We try to do things other than what we should do. Amen. And it came to pass about three months after. Here go our lesson. Going to our scripture, uh, that it was told you the same. Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the harlot, and also behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burned. And that's, the, that's the way we are. We want to kill anything. Kill it. Get rid of it. Look at what they did. And then we don't look at what we've done in our lives. Amen. We don't have compassion. We don't have mercy. And the first thing, same thing David did. David said, death to the man when he thought it was somebody else that had, had taken somebody's wife. Then when Nathan told him that he was the man, amen, it, it hit him hard, amen. And the same way with Judah, Judah was ready to burn her. And he was, you know, when he was doing it, he, 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 the Lord didn't burn him, but he's ready to burn, burn her. It's just like the disciples said, when they, they found out somebody was uh, the the was uh 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 they the people wouldn't listen to him or uh someone someone was uh uh not following what Jesus said they say should we call for fire to come down from heaven to come upon him amen amen he said you you don't know what kind of spirit you are, you are of you you don't know what's in you because they were just as just a short time before that they they were just as bad and then Think about this. They ran away and left Jesus uh, just a little later after that. Amen. 
Amen. So we have to be careful. We can pronounce things on ourselves. Amen. By judging others. The same judgment you meet, you you uh put out there can be brought right back on you. Amen. Now, let's go a little further. And it came to pass, uh, let's see, when she she, she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man who these are, am I with child? And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet, <laughs> amen, and the bracelet, and the staff. Amen. I know they had to strike him hard. Amen. You imagine, just like those men was finna stone that woman for, for being caught in the act of adultery, and Jesus rode on the ground, and he... Amen. He he. I don't know what he wrote on the ground, but he said, he said, uh, 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 he that has no sin, let him cast the first stone. Amen. And they all walked away sad. <laughs> Amen. And he asked, he asked the woman. He said, Where are your accusers? Amen. Is there anyone here to accuse you? Say, No man. Amen. And then he told him, Say, Go and sin no more. <laughs> amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. So. He, she had evidence, and she knew what was going to happen. She was thinking ahead, amen, but Judah wasn't, amen. He thought he was in the clear because, no, man, nobody saw me. Nobody spot. But listen, things can come back, amen. You might think you're not. God see everything, amen. He will expose you. He will expose you, and Judah Judah was exposed. Amen? Now, let's go a little further. And Judah acknowledged them and said, She has more righteousness than I. And that was the truth. Amen. Because that I gave her not to Sheila, my son, and he knew her again no more. Amen. He, what did, what did he do? He repented. He repented. Amen. Like some of his other brothers Amen. They didn't repent. They, they were not repenting. Amen. So he had to acknowledge that she was more righteous than, than he was. Remember the two people that the publican, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, the two men that went up to pray and they prayed and one was praying about all the things, good things he, he had did and fasted and paid his tithe and did this. And then there was this publican just beating on his chest and and, and, and wouldn't even raise his head because he said, you know, he said, I'm a sinner. I'm, you know, I'm a sinner. And which one went up more justified? The publican, because he admitted his sin. Amen. He admitted. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful to forgive us. Amen. Of our sins. Amen. So, so, amen. So this, this family, oh my goodness. Oh, had Oh, a lot going on. Amen? Now, let's go to the 10th verse. And this is what it said about, about Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. So we so know that many kings came through Judah. And the king of kings came through Judah. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. This was, this was the lineage from the lineage of Jesus. Amen? It came all of those generations. Amen. Jesus came. Uh, Jesus put a stop to it. He put, he halted it. He said, that's it. It's over. The king of kings is here. Follow me. If we follow Jesus, now we don't have to follow all those things that, that are, uh, are people that have been contrary to the word of God. Amen. What did the Lord say? He says, follow me. So if we follow Jesus, then therefore everything will be fine. And he said, a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Who is that Shiloh? Believe I believe is Jesus. When Jesus come, all these things we 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 don't have to look to a priest. We don't have to look to a a, a king. All we look to is Jesus, the King of Kings. Amen. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And that's the way it is. He said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Binding his foal unto the vine. So the Lord is, he's dedicated forever and ever and ever. He's dedicated to uh, his people. And he, he, he's here forever. Continual priest. Amen. We don't have to worry about 
uh, 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 finding any other. Jesus is it. He's the main, he's, he's the son of God, and he's here forever to, to make intercessions for us. Amen. And keep us in line through his spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Keep us in line with his will. Amen. So there will be no a lawgiver. Jesus will never depart. He will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Amen. Never. We never have to worry about it anymore. Amen. People are doing all these things that we read about that Judah, Judah was doing and, and, and the brothers was doing. Amen. And his parents and all those before him. Amen. Those things are happening today. But we have a leader that did none of those things. And we can look to him and we sometimes you'll get discouraged and you'll be like, oh man, look at what people are doing. But boy, but when you open this word up and you when when you look at what Jesus did, it just wipe all that out. He said he'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. All understanding. So amen. So we don't have to worry about the dysfunction of the family. Amen. Because Jesus put the function back in the family. <laughs> amen. He put the function back. He made us. Amen. You know, when the children uh, of, of uh, when uh, Adam and Eve, when they was cast out of the garden, they went into the, uh, the world, the uh, dysfunction. But really, the way we should be living is the way Adam and Eve was in the beginning. Amen. They have all this stuff going on. Amen. Now we're in a dysfunctional world trying to get back to the, the function, the real way uh, uh, we should be living. Amen. So we're in dysfunction, but the Lord will bring us back. Amen. He'll make us functional again. He'll take broken pieces and fit them, fit them back together. We're all broken. Amen. And the Lord will take our lives and put them back together. And then when he put us back together, he'll take us and make the, he'll make cups and plates and, and saucers and different things. He'll put them back together then they can be used for his service. Amen. And we want to be used for the service of the Lord. Amen. This is what he'll do. He'll make us dynamic leaders. Amen. He'll take the, the, from, the from the worst Amen. Some of us have been terrible. Amen. But he'll take us and mold us and make us into what he wants us to be. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? So we'll know how we should live and, and uh, how we should live and the way to the kingdom of God. Then we can, we can share that with others. Amen. So dynamics of family leadership. Amen. And there is a lot of dynamics. In being a family, being in a family, amen. So there's always something, amen. Man is but of a few days, but it is full of trouble, and amen. And we know in this life, there is a lot of trouble, amen. So family of God, we are the family of God. And we. how do we know that we're uh, 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 God's disciples or Christ's disciples? Is that we love the brother, brother. So if we love one another... And truly love one another, show love toward one another. We are his disciples. Amen. As Jesus loved us, we're to love one another. Amen. On that note, amen. Leadership. Amen. Let's lead. Not, not follow the world, but let's lead the world to Christ. Amen. And on that note, I like to say, be blessed, leaders.